I'm going to talk about what's, what's become a very chatty phrase, mixed methods. And let me start by asking, how many of you are familiar with that phrase? Got it. How many of you are encouraged to do mixed methods research for your dissertations? Put your hands up high, OK? OK, good. So no, none of your faculty have said you really should do mixed methods because it's so amazing and so cool? No. It's OK, so hard. it's so hard. <laughs> Right. Okay, so let me let me talk a little bit about, and this is going to be really brief. And this is going to be this is new to me. This stuff has never been presented before. Let, let me tell you what this what this particular project is all about. Margaret Edison Hart and I approached the Spencer Foundation about it's two years ago now. It'll be two years ago at AERA, and we we set up a meeting with the program officer. It was Andrew Bouchel at the time, and we asked her, and she brought along Bob Reem, who was an associate program officer at the Spencer Foundation. Both. Um, 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 Margaret and I had worked with the Spencer Foundation a great deal on a number of committees and so forth and had been funded by them. So we felt in pretty good position to, to approach them and talk about this. We wanted to put together some kind of statement about what mixed methods is. Not kind of the, um, kind of an academic definition. We weren't interested in an academic definition of mixed methods. I mean, this stuff has been talked about. This stuff has been out. You know, people have written about it. There's a lot of, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there about it. One can go read it and all of that. That was not our concern. We were starting from the point of, we both work in state universities. I work at the University of Buffalo and Margaret's at the University of Colorado Boulder. And we are under, and we, in other words, the university sector, and this is the same for the big privates, although have, they have a whole lot more money to begin with, okay? It's really different than the state institutions. And, um, I, and the state institutions now used to be approximately, when I went to Buffalo, it was about 70% state supported. In other words, that's where our money come from. We are now down to 12%, and that is one of the highest in the nation. So Colorado's at 3%, California's at 3%, and I believe Illinois is also at 3%. I may be off a percentage, but you get the picture, okay? Now that means several things. It means you gotta raise tuition, but you can't raise it too much, or your legislators are gonna be voted out of office, and they don't wanna do that. Or you've got to really lean on your faculties to start producing a lot more grants, which is exactly what has happened at the time. Any, any person teaching at a state university will tell you this, and also privates, but that's, again, different. They're gonna, you know, there's a lot of, of leaning on faculty members to start to produce um, certain kinds of grants. Federal grants give the university 58% kickback in a lot of places. Uh, private grants less so, obviously, and sometimes they don't give any kickback. But in any event, they um, private university these private foundations quote unquote count, but they're not part of academic analytics, and academic analytics are driving a lot of what's going on. Um, we have to fight really hard with our deans and everybody. I do this constantly to um, really still keep spotlighting those really prestigious. Um, private foundation grants like W.T. Grant, Spencer Foundation, and what have you, Russell Sage. So we wanted to put together a statement. The starting point is things have changed at the university. The second starting point is we are people who study the production and, and amelioration of social and economic inequalities. That's our starting point. I mean, that's where, where sort of this group began. There's lots of other things that can be studied. That's sort of where we entered this big conversation with this particular thing. So Margaret and I approached Spencer with a, with a draft, and Spencer said, we had a meeting with them, and Spencer said, you really should model what you're talking about and put a quant person on. So we approached Greg Duncan. If you don't know Greg Duncan, he's the editor with Richard Murnane of Wither Opportunity, which is an absolutely spectacularly helpful book in a lot of respects. So um, we, we put together this small team and we, we wanted to put, um, we wanted the funders at the table and we wanted a very, very small group of scholars at the table who were by and large at the, at the very senior level. So that's exactly what we did. We had IES at the table, a program officer from IES, um, we had a program officer from NSF, we had a program officer from WT Grant Foundation, and then we had the two people from the Spencer Foundation sitting at the table with us. And we had people sitting at the table, scholars who sitting, not all of whom have done mixed methods research, but who had a predilection, understood it, could sit at the table nicely with other people, play nicely in the sandbox with others, because that's a big deal in this kind of stuff. And that's the, kind, that's the group that we had. So we met twice face-to-face, -face, and then Margaret, I, and Greg 
really drafted stuff, sent it out to the group, drafted, et cetera, the whole review process thing. And it's, we're just about ready to release this statement. I'm waiting for one more round of feedback from this small group. And then the, the lead institution on this was the University of Buffalo, so I'm waiting for one small round. And um, it was a great process, by the way. It was just a spectacular process. So again, we're not seeking a singular definition. I'm not interested in singular definitions of class or mixed methods or anything else. I think that this is, you know, there's, it's, the, 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 it's good to have the kind of discussion about what these things mean. We, by the way, we recognize fully that there's epistemological differences mm -hmm. between qualitative research and quantitative research, okay? Of course there are. I mean, qualitative research doesn't start with the model that they're gonna end up with. Qual um, quantitative research does. I mean, they, they may find different things, but basically the model is pretty much set in place. They know what they're gonna do, they know how the variables are gonna be defined, et cetera. People working on mixed methods groups do not have to all be cross-trained, although I wanna say just a little bit about what I personally think and what the group personally thinks is gonna have to happen to graduate students at research universities who wanna be researchers, okay? Um, around the question of, of methods training. But um, you do have to have, a, you have to know the language. You have to have just enough training so that you know the language. You have great respect. You're not fighting constantly. No ego sitting at the table. We want people who can work together well to put together these larger teams. And remember these larger teams, hopefully are gonna be able to garner more funding. Uh, and and not just, it's not just a matter of funding. It's a matter of the kinds of questions you can ask and the kinds of questions you can answer by using multiple methods. So that was our, that was our starting point.